Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got some great compliance stories and our first story of the day is from opposite of off. How does sound work? I work as an audio visual tech at a community college. Basically deal with sound systems, projectors, microphones, etc. I joke that anything that plugs in on campus that's not a computer, that's my gig. We get occasional requests for sound systems in bigger classrooms and common areas. Not hard setups at all. Someone wants to make a presentation and they want to be heard clearly, so we'll set up a microphone on a floor stand, usually above a podium or desk, and run cables to the actual sound system, which is usually an all-in-one unit that has the amp, equalizer, and speaker all together. Set up on a tripod in the corner of the room, it can easily be loud enough for a room of 100 people or so. Anything bigger and we adjust by adding a second speaker or giving them a beefier system with separate components amp, equalizer, input boxes, etc. on a cart. Even for bigger sound systems, they still don't really take up that much space in an area if you know what you're doing. This happened years ago. I got a request from a communication arts instructor, a speech class. She wanted her classes to experience what it would be like to speak in front of a larger audience. So she requested a microphone for a larger classroom that we had. An older, simple lecture hall that held about 140 people. She was having a few different classes all show up at the same time and place, so the room would be packed. I called and talked with Speech Lady about the specifics for her request, letting her know what the setup involved. This isn't that big a deal, I just need a microphone, one microphone, she said, a little snotty. I started to explain that for a room that size with possibly over 100 people attending, she might want to make sure they're heard and go with the bigger system. Oh, we don't need all that other stuff, just a microphone. One microphone, that's it, nothing more. I was getting instructions for my job from someone who actually taught how to give a speech. I hesitated one last time, starting to tell her that for a sound system to work, you actually need things like speakers and cables and nothing else, just the microphone, with a slightly shouty Karen-esque voice. Is this where I say cue malicious compliance? Day of the event arrives, I walk into the room, weaving in and out of students to get to the instructor, who was standing at a desk at the front of the class. I walked up, smiling, are you Miss Speech Lady? Oh yes, did you have our mic? She said in an excited voice, ready to excite her students with sound. I held out a handheld microphone to her, here you go. She took the microphone a bit gingerly, then I turned and started to make my way out, but I looked behind me and saw Speech Lady, a person with a doctorate mind you, looking at the microphone like it was some weird alien device. She started tapping on it, speaking into it, looking at the sides and bottom, then slapping it with her hand, blowing onto it, and finally yelling into it. I could tell a few of the students knew what sound systems were, they're not that hard, when I saw some giggles from the seats at the confused teacher's reaction. I turned back around as I was about to leave the room to see her waving me back over, still a lot of students filing in. I go back over, how do you work this? I don't see any switches or anything and don't hear my voice getting louder. She actually said this all trying to speak into the microphone as if the sound would magically be amplified in midair. I smirked. Oh, you want it to make you louder? Well, for that you're gonna need, I actually did air quotes, all that other stuff. She still looked confused, but I could tell the light was starting to creep into her brain. I turned and again started on my way out while she called out, wait, um, I guess I need, wait. I could have been a jerk and just walked out from there, but the students didn't deserve any bad because of their stupid teacher. I had brought one of our portable sound systems with me to the lecture hall, but kept it outside the room. I walked back in and set it up in about three minutes, placing the unit on a tripod, the mic on a boom stand, and an XLR cable connecting the mic to the system. I gave it the briefest of sound checks by simply saying, loud noises, thanks Anchorman, and turned to go for good this time. During the quick setup, speech lady was apologizing to me until she was blue in the face but then she gained her composure quickly after my sound check. She turned out to be cool, writing me an email apology of sorts and thanking me for my help after her supersized class. Does it kind of blow your mind how little they knew about how sound systems worked? How like microphones worked? 
even for the old school toy microphones, they had a box attached to the microphone you had to carry around. Would this be a situation where it's okay to laugh in somebody's face? Or is that still not very cool? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is from illking3468. You want the manager? Sure. I own an auto detailing business. During the height of the pandemic, I lost maybe 5% of my business as it's mostly high-end cars owned by the semi-wealthy, or better yet, their kids. Anyhow, I have two employees, one who's the supervisor and the other that's a trainee. I still work 90% of the jobs to assist as they're both still in training. I had a new customer a year or so ago who wasn't happy and demanded of me to see the manager. I call over the supervisor, who proceeds to tell her exactly what I told her. She shrieked, asking, why are you just repeating your employee? He just says, ma'am, that's the owner. He's my boss. She got mad that I passed her off to someone lower than myself. So I just said, you wanted to see the manager and he's the one in charge of the trainee when I'm not here. So he's the closest thing to a manager. That ended it pretty quick. I can't imagine there's too many internal delights greater than that experience where a a customer who's belligerent and doesn't want to believe you goes, bring me your manager. And you're sitting there to yourself with your anime voice in your head going, ho ho ho, little do they know I am the owner. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Disassociated Developer. Find a new job? Okay. I've been working as a civil servant in the United States for about four years now. Last year, I celebrated my three-year anniversary working in the same office, but I'd been doing the same exact job all of those years, which I've enjoyed. I was ready to do a different workload. Because I'm a civil servant, I have plenty of job opportunities within my job series that do all kinds of different things. I also need to change the workload I'm doing to gain a breadth of experience in my career to qualify for higher paying positions. I spoke to my supervisor about my career goals and asked what I could do to broaden my experience. He asked for time to think about it and came back a few weeks later saying that he knew some other organization's supervisors who he could ask for a trade. An employee swap, one for one. I had my doubts that someone would agree to that but figured it was better than nothing. A few weeks pass and I followed up with him a couple of times without response. So I go to his office to ask about it. He dismissively said that nobody had anybody willing to trade one for one, so he recommended I search on my own for a different position if I felt strongly about it. So I did, starting that day. Within four months, I landed another position in the supply chain, which would give me more breadth of experience, and gave him my two weeks. Then all of a sudden, he and his boss were frantically trying to find something within that organization to move me like I had asked for months before. Guess what? Too late. Got a great supervisor who held several meetings with me, about monthly on average, specifically to help me prepare myself for my next move into a better paying seat. He really wants me to move into supervision, but I think I'll pass for now. Until I can max out my non-supervisor repay scale first. Then I can move into supervision at a much higher pay if I decide I want to do so. Now, supervisor pay scales are not nearly as easy to climb as it is for non-supervisory pay scales. It's kind of funny here because I'm assuming they operated off of this as if like, expecting OP to be complacent, not be able to find anything. But in reality, the advice they gave OP was actually in the best interest of OP's career. Obviously, the supervisor didn't actually try to help OP out, but them saying, sorry, you're gonna have to look around yourself, I think only served to motivate OP to improve their situation more. Our next story is from Ancient Educator 76. The police will deal with this. This is my manager's story, we'll call him Bruce. He's been managing both my and another location's Mendy's, with last night being his official last night before coming here permanently. Bruce is a funking boss, puns be fun, so this is awesome, but evidently he just had to go out with a bang. He was regaling me with a take about cops being called, so I had to ask. Bruce was trained as a manager at the other Regal Road location, covering at our Mendy's, fast food guru, frequently, always letting us know just how horrible working at Regal Road is, always because we're dying to know. Bruce was sitting around, cleaning things he's cleaned previously, waiting for any of the four scheduled employees to show up. No one did. 
General Manager gives him the go-ahead to 86 the store, shut her down. As he's wrapping things up, dishes, mopping, fryer filter exchange and clean, etc., a lady pipes in through the drive-thru demanding to speak with a manager about fully replacing her meal because we're idiots. No other specified reason. Bruce goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, Mendy's is closed right now, you'll have to come back tomorrow. She said, screw that, you order my order or I will, unintelligible, but she said order eight more times. Radio silence? She says, hello. Bruce continued his calm, ma'am, we're closed, I'm sorry, I'm the only one here. Now, drive through lady was super peeved, saying, if you ain't dealing with this, the police will. They will deal with this. At the sound of this, Bruce stopped listening to all else, took his headset off, and continued closing down. Five or ten minutes later, the police call the Mendy's store number, which Bruce picks up. He decides right then and there that yes, the police will deal with this. The police over the phone say, this is the Phoenix Town Police, there's a report of an issue in the store. Bruce began to not just explainagize for the wasted time, explaining the real situation. A belligerent customer who, by the way, is still in the drive-thru. The police say they'll handle it. Asked if he needed to be contacted by PD upon arrival. All the usual. Good old Bruce was content to just watch three patrol cars swarm this lady and her friend, watching one cuffed and the other needing a ride home. He grabbed his banana board and literally rode off into the sunset. This makes me think about that one news story I heard a while back, a good few years back, where a lady called 911 because the store they were at ran out of nuggets. Like, don't get me wrong, I kind of get it. <laughs> like, when you're craving something like that, you go there, you put in an effort to get them, and they say, sorry, we're all out. It is a little devastating. But, come on, get a grasp of reality. And our final story of the day is from Practical Topic 4537. I don't need your help. While this is probably not the most satisfying story on here, I still enjoyed it very much. A little context beforehand, I work at a gas station to earn some money next to school. We have customers that have fleet cards from their company to pay for gas. Normal cards can be held on the display or stuck in the top of the device, whilst said fleet cards have to be pulled through on the side one specific way. Many customers don't realize this and try to use it like a regular card. I always explain to them once how to use it. And if they still don't manage, I take the card and do it myself to speed things up, especially when it's busy. Most customers are happy with this because they don't have to figure it out themselves. Now, in comes Karen during ultra rush hour. Keep in mind, this is a small gas station with four pumps and just one register. All the pumps were full and new people already waiting to pump. She wanted to pay with a fleet card, but after getting it wrong twice, I explained how to do it. But she interrupted me being super rude, saying she doesn't need my help since she's a grown woman. I'm 18 but look a bit younger, while she was probably in her mid-50s. She eventually figured it out, but it still didn't work because she was pulling the card too fast. Think Among Us card task. I again offered to do it, but she cursed me out again. How dare I assume she's too stupid to do this? Okay, if you know everything better, then figure it out yourself. After maybe two to three minutes, I began clearing the coffee machine, which I had to stop a while ago due to it being busy. She became more and more angry until finally another customer, who is a regular and had witnessed the whole thing, stood next to her, quickly grabbed her card, and did it. She also got pissed at him, but after a whole 10 minute wait and waiting customers already leaving, everyone was relieved she finally screwed off. See, I cannot relate to entitled people like this at all, or narcissistic, I don't really know what you would really label this lady as, stubborn maybe? Cause I'm like hyper aware of like being weird or awkward or sticking out socially. So like if I was at this card machine and I tried to use it once and twice and it wasn't working, honestly I think I would be really grateful if the person behind the counter took it and did it for me, just to like get me out of there. God knows the last thing I want to do is be up there at the counter looking like a total buffoon in front of a whole line of people behind me, even if the audience really is just a bunch of gas station regulars. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy malicious compliance story, 
click on that left video, or if you missed my latest video, check out the video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.